they call the black people before we got rights in this country. <laughs> you saying she's colored, not black, baby. That's why everybody's eating you up right now. There's this thing that's unique to Africa, which is we can fight each other, but if some stranger comes for one of us, they come for all of us, okay? There's this saying in Egypt that goes, my brother and I will fight my cousin. But my cousin and I will fight a stranger. And that's literally a description of Africa. You come for one of us, you come for all of us. And this South African artist, colored is an ethnicity in South Africa. But then this chick came and said, colored in America is what we called ourselves before we had the right to call ourselves black, like you said, like she said in the video. And South Africans were telling her that no, colored is an ethnicity. It's that's what we this this is what they call themselves in South Africa. And she was just doubling down and saying what she said, which is so comical because first of all, she's like in America, girly, do you understand that the world does not revolve around America? You know, around the state. South Africa is a country in Africa. Okay, Africa is not North America. South Africa is not the United States of America. So that's first of all. Second of all, has anybody noticed that African Americans know only two words for ethnicities, which is black and white? They don't know anything. Like, there is not another word. Like, I made a video saying that North Africans aren't white. You know, we're not white because they were saying that we are colonizers and the, the reason our skin tone is this is because we stole the land from, you know, black Africans and Africans can't be this skin color and that we're white. And that's literally, like, that's legitimately and, like, actually what they think. This is literally, like, they are 100% convinced that all Africans are black and w anybody who looks like me is white. That's so comical because the thing about Africa is that we have every single skin tone and we have every single ethnicity in our continent. It's probably the most diverse continent of all the continents in the world. But then you have Americans who think that their political views, their definitions of race, their definition of ethnicities, like they literally think that their like rules, their societal rules are the rules that apply to the rest of the world. Not only that, but they have this sense of entitlement where they're always amazed that other countries don't really give a crap about their definition of things. Like, this is a country that just discovered uh, using kettles to make tea and putting uh, butter on toast, and they're calling it a like a food hack. And it's like, people are still using checks. Like, you don't understand how backwards and so far in the past you are. This girl is just, it's so ignorant not to listen to the people of the country you're talking about. The artist herself calls herself colored and is proud of that. South Africans are telling this girl, no, it's called colored, it's not called black. And she's like, no, y'all are wrong and I'm right because in America, that's the way it is. And like, bestie, the world doesn't revolve around you or your definition. Like, you live in this bubble where you think that the rest of the world literally should live in the same bubble as you. And the rest of the world, and specifically Africans, don't give a crap about your definition. Because Africans will not call us white. Africans know that in Africa, we are very diverse. And we are all equally Africans. And when you come for one of us, you come for all of us, okay? You, you, you kind of, you chose the wrong country. You chose the wrong people to pick a fight with. You cannot beef with Africans. Like, we do not allow beefing with one of us. We, we, we stick together in situations like this. We are united. And you need to kind of learn your lesson and stop being so stubborn about your opinion. Because if you go to this girl's page, first of all, the video is still up, which is I completely, like, I, I don't believe that you should take a video down just because you've been proven wrong. But yeah, like, if you let the video up, then you should make a follow-up video apologizing you, because you need to apologize to South Africans. And also, I genuinely believe in making mistakes and learning from your mistakes. You made a mistake. And you said that, no, she's black. And then South Africans, the people of this country, corrected you. They know better than you. You do not, your, your knowledge is not superior to the native people of the country. You do, you should listen to them and you should learn from your mistakes. Educate yourself. Because the worst part about this is that she said, educate yourself. See, the closet is made of glass. You are the one who needs to be educated. So please, I, I'm gonna need Americans 
to stop inserting themselves in our business, okay? You, your education system has failed you so much that even when we tried to educate you, your education system and your society has convinced you that you were right has convinced you that you're the greatest country in the world and you walk around with the sense of entitlement when in fact you are a third world country in a Gucci belt, okay? Like, like, no, you have, you, you, you need to just kind of come to, like, arrive to the modern world, learn how it works, okay? Because this is just laughable and honest to God embarrassing. How can you be so proud and so loud about your ignorance? Like, are you not embarrassed? How are you not embarrassed? And that's all I gotta say. Thank you. Yo, yo. Thanks for watching up to this far, man. Much love to you, man. About that video that has passed. There is a lot of information that that wonderful human was giving. But my question is, does it really matter, man? Your ethnicity, where you come from, black, white, or colored. Does it really matter? No. What matters is what they are now talking about. Love, peace, caring, respect for one another. You see, that's just like you do for yourself. In the end, we are all humans. The color doesn't matter, man. This is just uh, coloring. And what matters is what is inside. Is what we should give out, man. The good vibes and much love to everybody for watching up to this far. To our subscribers, to our new subscribers, much love to you. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and the like button because you're loved. Much love to everybody, MJ Stiston, Josie, uh, George Jr., everybody, man. You are loved. Let's keep watching. This is the Chapman's Drive in Western Cape. The views here are breathtaking. Oh my God. Cats hate water, and the reason is insane. Cats evolved in dry environments and never went in rivers or lakes. Other than drinking from bodies of water, cats were completely alienated from soaking in it. But that's not the main reason cats hate water. Cats hate getting wet because of what it does to their fur. Wet fur is incredibly uncomfortable for cats, and it takes a long time for it to dry. Wet fur makes them cold and shiver, but the wet fur also makes cats heavier and less movable. Throughout history, this made them an easier target and allowed predators to catch them. But cats accidentally falling into water is a whole other experience, and they hate it. When cats unexpectedly fall in water or get sprayed with it from a bottle, it's a very shocking experience. This can scare them for the rest of their lives and make them avoid water at all costs. But this next reason will shock you even more. Cats are perfectionists and obsess over their grooming. They lick themselves all day to make sure they are as clean as possible. But water often contains dirt or chemicals that ruin their cleanliness. Yo, oh, man, much love to all the animals and people. If there. you want to be a great gardener, or anything for that matter, then it pays to understand pattern genius. See, you can watch 10,000 hours of YouTube videos on a topic, and it will actually make you stupider about that topic. But I've met experienced permaculture designers, even people who are very young, who strike me as being geniuses and having encyclopedic knowledge of their topic and knowing how to apply it. Hey, look, this is called the Anasazi Sun Dagger. It's a symbol carved into banded butt about a thousand years ago. And the interesting thing about it is this one simple symbol encodes a lot of information about the time of year. It clearly shows the winter solstice, the summer solstice, and the equinoxes. Very important information for planning and for the agricultural calendar. And this is what's interesting about patterns. See, he, our brains are sophisticated pattern recognition software, which is why symbolic communication is so powerful for us. Think about how many of these you know. But not just that you know them, think of how much information just one of these symbols encodes. Maybe if you're like me and you see the Shell Oil sign, you think of their human rights violations in Africa and that they're one of the worst in terms of climate change. Maybe you eat McDonald's or Taco Bell or drink Pepsi products, and just seeing that symbol, you can list off a bunch of menu items or products that you like. Our heads are filled with these things these days. This is why in permaculture we communicate in patterns like all the time. For example, the herb spiral is one simple pattern. It's a nature pattern, the spiral that we can recognize. That pattern encodes a love of, and appreciation of nature and its patterns. 
But the herb spiral encodes a bunch of other important patterns too. If you know about it, it encodes information about microclimates and how to take advantage of microclimates, how to take advantage of smart watering, how to plan gardens so that they're resistant to weeds and grass encroachment, and how to invest your time and energy in permanent lasting change instead of annual gardens that have to be redone every single year. This one little pattern encodes a lot of wisdom and a lot of solutions to a lot of problems. When we talk about the sort of fractal patterns of rivers or of trees, we know it's because nature has solved the problem of the most efficient way to move resources through space. And if we want to create efficient gardens, we can copy that pattern. And in just the same way, it is a great way to solve the problem of maximizing space utility and minimizing maintenance and making things efficient. And once we start looking for patterns and using them to solve our problems, we create the scaffolding that we can plug a lot of information into and apply it where it really makes a difference. Do that enough and people start thinking you're a genius. Oh, that's beautiful, man. And interesting. We're here in the swampy forest of Virginia near Interstate 64. Thousands of people are driving up and down this highway, potentially oblivious to what's hiding behind the trees. On the edge of an industrial area lie a set of structures that are hard to ignore. This is a wild, weird sight that nobody would expect. There appears to be dozens of just giant white heads kind of all wrapped around like a choir. What I find weird is the size of these heads. They're easily 20 feet tall. It's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Yet it's what the statues represent that's truly astonishing. When you look closer, you start seeing these familiar faces. These are the American presidents. It's a little eccentric to have done it, possibly, but how many people in the world can say they've got presidents of the United States sitting in their backyard? And the way they got here, what a story that is. What? How did they get there? Ah, man! This informant blew your mind what type of info, what a fire are they? Oh, the airmen match the four states of matter in science. Very true. They match the four cardinal directions, the four seasons, four stages. What? They also match Plato's four. Oh, they match the suits of the tarot and the suits of standard playing cards too. What? In Kabbalah, the tree of life symbolizes in section in four symbols. They are the four stages in alchemy to create physiology. Oh, this is get the concept of fifth element. Chinese philosophy has its own five elements too. How? The four elements plus varying levels of either, either, huh? This is very, very much the same as of masculine hierarchy of needs. Back to alchemy. There are seven stages of turning a base metal into gold. These seven stages, the alchemic principles. Oh my god. This is a lot of information too much to us. This is all ancient knowledge. What do you think about all that? Huh? You Somehow guys, sense, I have to man. share this tip with you because I was just using it and I was like, I have to share this on TikTok. Vodka. I thought this entire time the costume department was just a bunch of alcoholic drunks. And then I was doing a costume fitting a while back and I saw another bottle of vodka and I was like, all right, something else is up. And I was like, why do you guys always have vodka in the costume department? And she's like, oh, that's to sanitize the clothing. And I was like, excuse me, now I, you, you get the cheapest, highest alcohol content vodka you can find. And you, I, you, now I'm like spraying mattresses, spraying shoes. It gets the odor. The vodka completely dries odorless and it sanitizes and removes smells. Uh, I, I feel really guilty for thinking they were just drunks this whole time. But now I'm running around like spraying shoes and everything with vodka and no smell when it dries. Man, that's an incredible trick, man. Whoa, I love it. The dark extraterrestrial beings have control all the way up to the 11th dimension. There are 12 dimensions on this planet in this time matrix. So the 12th Stargate is actually located in the Hawaiian Islands 
on the island of Kauai. We all know what just happened with the wildfires in Maui. For us to leave this time matrix, the process of ascension, we must exit through the 12th dimension. This is actually what Jesus did himself. He exited through a stargate in Giza to leave through the 11th dimension. So the phantom matrix, which was created and is the opposite of the planet Nibiru, which is the galactic station for this control system. On the opposite end, we have what we know is this huge black hole or the phantom matrix, which encompasses many timelines of the earth plane and galactic histories within this particular system. The rabbit hole is extremely deep and I will go in in following videos. You can look to the work of Ashayana Dean, Lisa Renee for more information. If you go on to ascensionglossary.com, you can get more information. Now, as with this information and a lot of the false prophets out there, you have to, on the path of ascension, discern the information that feels true and accurate to yourself and what has been manipulated and distorted by the darker forces. This is not so cut and dry, this whole process. Just like, let's go to the fifth dimension, let's go to 5D. There are so many different things going on right now as far as the Ascension Awakened community. It is wild. And they're, what they're trying to do is basically ultimately confuse the hell out of everyone so they have no idea who they can trust, what information they can trust, what they can't trust. But the whole purpose of this also is in teaching us how to trust from the heart, figure out what is actually true. And this is the path of enlightenment and polarity integration. So I will not go into all of the false prophets out there. There are individuals who work with the Galactic Federation of Light who is of the negative alien agenda many who are not conscious of the fact that they work with them, many who are conscious and who are actively higher ups in the whole, because they, they are the ones that actually run the darker forces in this world. So this is a whole hierarchical system. It goes back into Masonic traditions and its prime control in the Vatican. And the Thothian groups which were actually not the saviors and the correct distillation of the information found within the emerald tablets okay yes you can find elements of truth but a lot of that has been distorted as of the flower of life as of the tree of life this information is distorted because if it is not understood correctly then these symbols create spells and as our words do and can create this container, this false phantom matrix that we are trying to exit in the process of ascension. So I would tell you there are many different levels, mind programs within all of us, and this is not so cut and dry. So there is a very deep rabbit hole to all of this. Oh my god, no, that's a bit creepy. Man. Oh my god. Oh my god, huge fan. Oh, my man. No, What's... not you. That, that's a huge oh. fan. Sorry, I don't, I don't even know who you are. Huge fan, right there. <laughs> First of all, have you heard about this cycling Mike? Yeah, right? not a fan. No, 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 he's the GOAT. To people that don't know, he's on his bike and he films other people in cars on their phone, but usually the person is sat at traffic lights. Yeah. So this is the guy, oh. he films them and, he, and he, he trolls them. Like he'll be there like, oh, congrats mate, there's six points. And yeah. the guy's like, wait, what do you mean? He's... And he goes, he sends the footage to the police and the police for the most part will go and give the driver six points. And here's the craziest part about Cycle Mikey. He goes so far, he turns up to the hearings. He films him at the court as he goes another one busted six points That's this insane. guy is the biggest hater it's of all time. about time this world saw some justice 
Oh my God, <laughs> that sounds uh, so homing. Um, here's my observation for today: that life is very meta, because not only are you a piece being played in a simulation, but you are also the player playing the piece in the same simulation. Does that make any sense? Y'all are throwing away gold every year in the fall and it breaks my heart every time. And if y'all been here a while, you know what it is. These, these leaves. Y'all mow them up every year, rake them up every year. Put them in a bag or put them in a pile on the side of the road or you burn them. They are not garbage. Let me explain this to you. In the spring and summer, when your trees have green leaves on them, they're making food. Minerals go up to the leaves and the leaves make the food and transport all the sugars and nutrients back around throughout the tree. Think of how much nutrients food this tree needs to grow like this. Again, the leaves are facilitating that. Then once fall starts hitting, the tree is time to start wrapping it up. So they start sending all the foods down to the roots. And after that happens, the excess nutrients remain in the leaves. And then the trees drop them to the ground. And now there is a giant blanket of food nutrients on the ground, right under the tree, right over the roots. The second that happens, the worms, fungi, and other little critters down there in the dirt, they start eating on them, breaking them down, and returning those excess nutrients back into the dirt. And then the rain throughout the fall, and the snow throughout the winter, and then the early spring rains, they seep those nutrients down through the soil deeper and deeper and deeper to where the roots are where the tree pulls up the nutrients. So now when spring hits, boom, the tree has a bunch of food already down there where the roots are. So it can start pulling them up and get to going. So if you want nutrient rich food, fruits and vegetables, or you want a luscious lawn, or you want a beautiful landscape, get the, use the leaves, you, use your leaves. Leave them where they are in your lawn and run them over with a lawnmower. Or you can run them over with a lawnmower rake them up and then pile them up they'll break down into leaf mold or leaf compost and you could just use that later apply it to your plants and stuff later the creator gave you everything you need to be successful seek him out he will show you peace yo that's so interesting man so stay on believing what do you call it so that's why you don't see the camera in the mirror huh Oh my god! That's it. You heard about the case man. where they were a, a teenage girl who was Googling uh, pregnancy tests because maybe she got pregnant. Okay. Mm -hmm. I read this. I haven't re verified it, but it's completely plausible. And the fact that she had searched pregnancy tests, she got coupons in the mail for baby products. And her parents said, What, are the, why, what is this? She got outed. That's a little weird. But yeah, but it's it's that's, the kind of thing that can happen. That seems intrusive. Certainly. They're oh, that's intrusive. Well, only things. because it's pregnancy. It's intrusive no, it's in every way. No. Because Don't tell me it's not intrusive because, because you want to buy sending Nikes. Sending you physical things. It's not just something that appears on your Google feed that you can quickly glance over. What's the difference between sending you mail to your mailbox and filling your advertising space in front of your face? with product what's For the difference one other people can see it i walk by your computer i can see it don't look <laughs> i guess i'm arguing in principle rather mm -hmm. than in detail y'all please tell me y'all have seen this man's video in case you haven't i'm gonna tag him below in the video he's in a place in oregon and he sees what looks like a door in this like mountain cliff face this door and it straight up does look like a door so he said that when he first saw it, the door was open and that he watched it close and it looked like something was peering out at him. And this intrigued me so much. So I spent hours yesterday just digging into this in every way I knew how. So this is the location where he's at. These are the coordinates below. Now he mentions in his video or in the hashtags giants. He thinks there's giants in Oregon, which could be. But my first thought when I seen this, the moon-eyed people. 
I've talked about them before. These are the little people of Cherokee legend that live inside the mountains and they only come out at night because they can't see very well in the daytime. And very similar to this legend is the legend of the Nunahi of Blood Mountain in Georgia. And there's a particular legend associated with that place that speaks of a door just like that one. A secret door that opens up into the interior of the mountain where this race of immortals live. In the Moon-Eyed People legend, they are spoken of as small, like dwarves or elves. But the Nunahi are described kind of like shapeshifters. They can appear small, they can appear as a normal-sized human or larger and they can make themselves invisible. And they live in these subterranean cities inside mountains. So I had to dig really hard to try to find out, does Oregon have similar legends to these? And they do. I can't pronounce these names. I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna put it on the screen. But this is the name of the little people of the Cascade Mountains. And this particular spot in the Cascade Mountains, it's on Quartzville Drive, not far outside Sweet Home. The name of these little people means ground people. They are said to dwell inside the heavily timbered peaks and ridges of the Cascade Mountains. They are described as small, about two feet tall, and can become invisible. But other than being small, they look like regular people, and they speak in a language that sounds like birdsong. They, like the moon-eyed people, are believed to only really come out at night, and they will call out to each other in what sounds like birdsong or whistling. And so it's said if you ever hear that in this area, you should never respond to it. Because if you answer it or try to follow them, they have the power to drive humans mad. Another tribe in Oregon speaks of another legendary race called the, which also means ground people or people of the ground. They are also said to reside inside the mountains and are described exactly the same. Like legendary dwarves with supernatural abilities. And they are often referred to as baby feet. I guess in comparison to like Bigfoot. A lot of these baby feet legends have actually become obscure and lost to time. You can find references to them, but it's kind of hard now. But there's a few places in Oregon that legends of them are responsible for the name, like Baby Rock, Babyfoot Lake, Babyfoot Creek. And it's also said the baby feet come out at night. They call to each other in birdsong and that they possess the power to drive humans crazy. And people that have encountered one often find later that they've lost several days time. This is also common with the Nunahee legends in Georgia. These creatures or people or whatever are also said to uproot trees and throw large rocks a lot like the Bigfoot legends. But they rip up the trees because they use them to build their homes inside the mountains. And so sometimes at night you will hear these loud booms and cracks and like small explosions. And it's these little people ripping up the trees. However, I'm not going to completely dismiss the giant thing because in several stories related to hollow earth, giants are said to guard the doorways to protect these subterranean cities from people who may stumble across them. So when I was trying to find this on Google Maps, I didn't actually know where it was. So it took me a while to find it. But in the process, I think I accidentally found another door right here. And do you see it? It looks a lot like the first one. Is that not a second door? So my question now is, um, has anybody seen this one? Is it open too? Are they connected? Cause that looks like a door to y'all, right? Just like the first one. I don't know, but I really wish somebody would go knock on both of these doors and just, just see what happens. However, it is said that there are other entrances like these all over the world. Doors that lead to a world underneath our own. But what's odd is that over time, a lot of the locations where some of these rumored doors are supposed to be are now occupied by um, military bases or declared off limits by the government or monitored by some kind of officials. And the guy that posted the original video did a couple updates and said something about the military possibly following him. So if any of y'all go check this out, and I hope you do, just be careful. Don't answer any whistles and stay away from the military because I don't want none of y'all going missing. I would feel really bad, but I really want to know if that door opens and what's behind it. No, oh, we have some videos about that place in our previous oh, episodes. Bro, bro, bro. I'm just going to sit right here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro, look, 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 I thought we were homies, I thought we were homies, you know, we both drink still reserves, bro, we both smoke cigarettes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, a woman okay. walks behind you, and it looks like she fully disappears. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? No. W watch this video, this is real, take a look at this. And what was the highlight of the evening for you tonight? Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman winning for Best Actor for a Drama. Very cool. Oh my god, that, that is my mom. That is my mom! Wait, what? That's my mom. Wait, let's watch it again. That's your mom, but what? That woman with the dark hair yes. is my mother. That's, that, that's, that's your mom? mom. Yes. Philip Seymour Hoffman winning for Best Actor for a Drama. Very cool. And where, we have, I've been looking for her for like the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
You are the best. That is so funny. That is very that's your strange. Mom? That is fully my mom. Oh, hi, mom. That's so cute. That is oh weird. God, that's Where hilarious. did she go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's a bit funny. Yeah, I just want to warn you before you watch any further. If you want to continue taking the blue pill or the red, what's the what's the happy pill? Just. I wish I could go back a month before I discovered TikTok. Oh, look at this. Cue the remote control turkey, right? Totally. Oh my gosh. Please. There's probably someone in the bushes is operating that thing. Look at that, look at that. I know what's going on. We know what's up. Running from us, because they know. Anyway, I'm at this uh, thing called a par course. Yeah. I've ever been to suburbia, they make things like this. It's this track, right? It goes in a circle, and then there's like little spots to exercise on it. Things get crazy out here. And here's the thing though. This is the problem. You see back there? Can you see them? You see them right there? Are they too small? Yeah. You know what that is? Oh, cue the mom with the baby in the stroller. You can say it. You know what it is. Every day, same time. All right. Oh, here they go. They're about to walk across the bridge. I've been coming here every day for a whole week. It's exactly the same thing. Same exact. You know what it is. How are you? Oh my God. So I've been living in Africa for three years now, and I only have one regret. And that regret is, I wish I would have left America way before three years ago. It took me too long to get the courage to leave. But y'all, listen. There's other places outside of what we've been born in that will treat and love us and appreciate us. So we don't have to keep dealing with that. Look into the continent of Africa and pick a country. Yo, thanks for watching after this film. And much love to you from wherever you are watching from. You are respected, man. You see, myself, I've been living in Africa since when? Since... Uh, it's forever and now that time I've been here, I really think it's a beautiful place, man. And after watching some videos here of how people live in different parts of the world, ha! I find this place to be pretty cool, man. Much love to you guys from wherever you're watching from, from this side of the world. You are really loved and respected, man. And please, share good vibes, respect, caring, man. For the universe and for the people around you and also treat people with humility and honesty you see that way you can change the world into a good vibes world man one love to everybody no matter the color or whatever or wherever you come from even the religion it doesn't matter man much love from happiness and quotas you are loved hit the like button man and let's keep watching watch till the end much, much love. This pretty pink plant could kill you. Today, we're talking about ricinus. Let's botanize. This is ricinus communis, the source of the poison ricin. A mere four to six seeds of this plant contain enough poison to kill an adult human. Ricinus communis is the sole species in the genus ricinus, and it's a member of the Spurge family, the Euphorbiaceae. Other members of this family that you may be familiar with are your holiday poinsettias. Ricinus shares many traits with other members of the Euphorbiaceae, including a white milky latex when a plant part's broken, extra floral nectaries, and unisexual flowers. 
Surprisingly, not only do the seeds of ricinus produce the poison ricin, but it's also the source of castor oil, which is used in a variety of products ranging from soaps to brake fluids. While ricinus communis is native to the Mediterranean basin, today you can find it growing all over the place, including in garden beds. Yo, this is interesting because people from here think Watch that is sweet. This. this is a professional ventriloquist figure and I'm going to show you how he works. Now every one of these levers has a specific movement on his face. That's why they're called figures. Some ventriloquists uh, get mad when you call them dolls or puppets. I don't really care. You can call them whatever you want. Slappy, creepy, possessed. Whatever your height desires, I don't really mind. But let's get through these little levers and see what they do. The first one moves the mouth. Easy peasy. See? Moves the mouth just like that. Next one, I like this one, it's the eyes. This one moves the eyes. Next one, individual blinkers. So you can blink like that. These are the hardest to use just because they're like right in the middle. Boom, boom, boom. And the last one is my favorite, it's the eyebrows. Move them up like that. And you put it all together and you can be like this. All right, now we're gonna show all of my movements. This is my mouth, right? Right. These are my eyes. And this is the hard one, right? Yeah, the, the blinkers. Uh, I'm sleepy. Kind of look drunk, yeah. And the last one, the eyebrows, which are kind of like a, oh, I'm so excited. There you go. Oh, that's pretty interesting, man. Who was it just robbery? Huh, the dog passed a few hours before this was taken. Oh, man. Ah, you see, the cat was mourning the dog. What was happening? Oh, this cat was like saying goodbye to the dog's ghost or what was that? Oh man, this is so sad man and it really makes me wonder do these animals really see what we cannot see or what do you think? Please love and care for the animals and the universe at large as you care and love for yourself man. Oh, this is so touching. What? Every penguin was escaping a big way. Let's see. What type of world was it escaping from? What? Oh my god! This elderly man lost everything he had in fire, but he saved his kitten. What? <sighs> no, you see, now this is a gesture of genuine love, and that's very amazing. Meet my neighbor's guard dog, Raymond. What? You see, this is so beautiful with all these animals mm -hmm. and Orlando Brown so said man. He is Tupac. Like sometimes we think he ain't crazy because people trying to silence him, and then he say some shit like this. Let me roll this clip. He's probably going to be arrested for his part of the murder of Tupac. He is Tupac. Okay. Can't arrest him if he's the man that died. <laughs> Can't arrest him if he's the man that died. What the? Okay. Look at that man. So, Look at him. It's so Tupac. So, so what happens if they arrest him? Do you think he's going to beat the case? They, they, they're not going to arrest him. I just said he's Tupac. If, he, if they arrest him, they have to put him in Tupac's body. They're not going to they're not going to arrest him cuz they don't want to see they're going to let the man live. They're going to they don't want to see Pac up. That's what this shit is all about. They don't want to see they don't want to see him living. They don't want to see him up. Even though he's alive, we all know he's here. They don't want to give him his body. That's what that is. They want him to look like a sucker every time he keep popping up and shit. That's not Tupac and how he will pop up. You fucking holograms and shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god. What? The paranormal chick here. You know, see, it's not CGI or AI. It's a true video of a cryptid caught on camera. Take a look and tell me what you think. Oh, my God. What is that, man? Ah, that is very surprising. Ah, 
Thanks for watching up to this far, man. You are loved and respected. And if you are loving our long format videos, please share in the comment section what you think about them. Much love to you for watching up to this far. You are a wonderful soul, man. Share up to the world from wherever you are. And good vibes, respect, humanity is all we are all about. Keep it tuned for yet another fire episode. Bye bye till we meet next time. You are loved. We are loved, man.